Good morning, and let us join together in singing number 596, Jesus Shall Reign, number 596. This Mass is offered for a community of intentions for the souls of Elizabeth Perron, for Beatrice and Priscilla Caber, Joseph Falzone, Ron Elias Roni, and Joseph Canarozzo. And we pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Job. Job spoke, saying, Is not man's life on earth a drudgery? Are not his days those of hirelings? He is a slave who waits long for the shade, a hireling who waits for his wages. So I have been assigned months of misery, and troubled nights have been allotted to me. If in bed I say, when shall I arise? Then the night drags on. I am filled with restlessness until the dawn. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle. They come to an end without hope. Remember that my life is like the wind. I shall not see happiness again. The word of the Lord. It is fitting to praise him. The Lord rebuilds Jerusalem, the dispersed of Israel he gathers. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord who heals the broken the broken hearted and binds up their wounds. He tells the number of the stars. He calls each by
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if I preach the gospel, this is no reason for me to boast, for an obligation has been imposed on me, and woe to me if I do not preach it. If I do so willingly, I have a recompense, but if unwillingly, then I have been entrusted with a stewardship. What then is my recompense? That when I preach, I offer the gospel free of charge so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. Although I am free in regard to all, I have made myself a slave to all so as to win over as many as possible. To the weak, I became weak to win over the weak. I have become all things to all to save at least some. All this I do for the sake of the gospel, so that I too may have a share in it. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. On leaving the synagogue, Jesus entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Simon's mother-in-law lay sick with a fever. They immediately told him about her. He approached, grasped her hand, and helped her up. Then the fever left her, and she waited on them. When it was evening, after sunset, they brought to him all who were ill or possessed by demons. The whole town was gathered at the door. He cured many who were sick with various diseases, and he drove out many demons, not permitting them to speak, because they knew him. Rising very early before dawn, he left and went off to a deserted place where he prayed. Simon and those who were with him pursued him, and on finding him said, everyone is looking for you. He told them, let us go to the nearby villages that I may preach there also, for this is the purpose I have come. So he went into their synagogues, preaching and driving out demons throughout the whole of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord.
three distinct uh, lessons we learn today from the readings, particularly from the gospel. The first uh, lesson that we learn is that Jesus truly is the divine physician. Jesus truly is the one for whom, to whom we come for healing. In my uh, seminary studies, I had the opportunity to spend about a year and a few months as a hospital chaplain. And I really enjoyed that work. I found it to be very, very rewarding, very, very meaningful work. And I remember walking into uh, this one woman's room. Her name was Grace. She was in her late 60s and she was in hospice care. She wasn't Catholic, she was Protestant. In fact, I found most times praying with the Protestants to be a little more fruitful. Their prayers were so, uh, so deep and in depth in ad-libbing and conversation with God. The Catholics, you know, we, we revert sometimes just to our, our, our learned prayers. But I was with Grace by her bedside and I asked Grace if she would like me to pray for her or with her. And she asked me first and foremost if we could pray to God, the divine physician. Grace was in the hands of very capable doctors and nurses, but she knew truly in whose hands she was placed. Grace was placed in the hands of God, God the divine physician. The doctors and nurses were simply trying to ease her pain, but could not cure her sickness. She never lost faith that God, the divine physician, could heal her. You know, first and foremost, we have to recognize that we also need God, the divine physician. And it's not just when we're uh, afflicted with some sort of suffering, whether that be an ailment, a cancer, a, 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 a sickness of some sort. There's a spiritual sickness in our hearts. There's a, an ailing heart, an ailing soul that we have to find first and foremost in God whom can heal all of our brokenness but we have to recognize it. We have to recognize that we need God. We need to, to place our faith, our hope, our trust in him who can heal us. We need to recognize first and foremost our brokenness. Lord God, heal me from my jealousy. Heal me from my anger. Heal me from my lack of forgiveness. Heal me from this temptation. Heal me from this addiction. Heal me from this lust. Whatever it may be, our spiritual souls, our spiritual well-being, our health, to come to God, the divine physician. The multitudes were there. And Jesus Christ wanted to enter into each and every one of their lives, every one of their homes, particularly even Peter, uh, P Peter, whose mother-in-law lay in bed sick and suffering. Jesus teaches us by this very act that he wants to enter into our lives. He wants to come in. He wants to be let in. The second thing we learn from this gospel is that people wanted to bring their friends, their loved ones to Jesus. You know, our relationship with Jesus is not something that we, we hold tight to ourselves, that we don't want to share with other people. We have the great commandment, the great mandate, go out and preach the gospel, evangelize the world. Don't keep this secret to yourself. We see what good friends do in, in the gospel when the friends of the paralytic man come and they literally break open the roof of this house to drop the paralytic man in the front of, of Jesus Christ. Why? So that Jesus could heal their friend. Because they believed. That, that invitation is what each and every one of us are called as well to do, to invite others to come to know and encounter Jesus, the divine physician, 
to come and invite others to come and see what we have experienced, the healing that we have gained. Have we been fully healed? No. But do we still believe? Yes. Today, it's a real blessing to see just a few examples just here in church of families who have invited others to come to Mass today. We have a, a Mother Hannah who's here with her two children. She invited her friend and her God's daughter to come to Mass today. In, in a week's time, I'll be baptizing Hannah's second child, Eloise. We have Antoinette in the first pew from Astoria, Queens, who invited, wanted to come to Mass today at the Co-Cathedral and in turn brings her family with her. We have the, the Gretchies from, from Wanta who have driven all the way in from Wanta. You thought your commute was bad? who've invited themselves and then also in turn invited me for pizza. That's a good invitation. We have those invitations around us. Why? Because we want others to see and to encounter and to meet the Lord. I challenge you. I challenge you, each and every one of you. I challenge myself. How are we inviting others? Are we inviting others? Nancy, who has invited her, his, her son to be with us for Mass today as Mass is offered for their family member. Are we inviting others? How are we doing it? The greatest invitation is an invitation that's offered sincerely. An invitation that's offered authentically. Not not the holier-than-thou invitation, oh, you need Jesus. No, we all need Jesus. What a great opportunity it is to invite others to encounter and meet this divine physician. What a better friend can you be than to help others, your friends, your family, your co-workers, your own flesh and blood, your daughter and granddaughter, to come and encounter the Lord. And finally, I think we learn from this gospel that we need to take care of ourselves as well. Jesus Christ, after the multitude has lit literally bombarded him, healing and healing and healing and just being constantly surrounded by, uh, the, by people and, and, and by constantly giving himself out to others, Jesus basically wakes up early in the morning to run away, to be by himself, the gospel, the evangelist says, to find himself in prayer. Maybe Mark might be covering for Jesus here a little. Maybe Jesus just wanted to rest. Maybe he just wanted to be and find time to be by himself in the presence of his Father, in the presence of the divine. Here's where we find that presence. But we find it for one hour on a Sunday I can assure you one hour on Sunday is not going to suffice to maintain that peace. We need to find that time to, to rest in God's presence, to rest not distracted by our phones, by our, our, our emails, by our notifications, by our friends, by our families, but just to find some time to be in the presence of the divine. Simply by calling forth the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is calling forth the presence of the divine. So that we can bring to God that which needs to be healed. So that we can bring to the divine physician and allow him to open up our hearts and enter our lives. So that as we're healed, we can be a greater examples and greater authentic invitation for, to others to encounter that divine physician so that they too can find a place to rest, that they too can find the divine physician, be healed, invite others, and find a place to rest. This constant cycle that lasts but a lifetime until we finally rest with that divine physician in eternal life. Until then, it's for us.
to seek the Lord and allow him to enter into our lives as he so desperately wants to, to find in him the source of healing, to find in him our rest, and to invite others to find the same. May God bless us. stand now and profess that which we believe, our Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come, amen. God responded to Job when he was in need, to Simon Peter when his mother-in-law was in need, and to all of us, we trust that God hears our prayers, which we make today on behalf of our brothers and sisters, as well as ourselves. To the church, that in proclaiming the gospel, we may drive out the demons of hatred, apathy, and cynicism. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For basic health care, that it may be available and accessible to all here in this country and everywhere in the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those discerning their vocation, that they may consider the rewards of consecrating themselves to God for the sake of the gospel, as St. Paul did, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those like Job, who are burdened by hopeless days and troubled nights, that the Holy Spirit may gently guide them from despair to hope, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may realize that in baptism, Christ grasped our hand and raised us up to new life, enabling us to bring his healing touch to all those suffering from afflictions of the body, mind, or spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all our intentions spoken and unspoken, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls, the intentions of this Mass, Elizabeth Perone, Beatrice and Priscilla Caber, Joseph Falzone, Ronelius Roni, and Joseph Canarozzo, we pray to the Lord. Compassionate God, you heal the brokenhearted, bind up the wounded, and sustain the lowly. Hear the prayers we bring before you, and answer them if they be in accord with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. We thank you for your kindness and your support in our collection today. There is only but one Sunday collection this Sunday. Thank you for your generosity.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. be 
celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, our most chaste spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained to your, for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the divine physician. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. O oh God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live, that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Yesterday, the Feast of St. Blaise, unfortunately we don't have a Mass on Saturdays that are, that's televised, but I wish to give you all a blessing, a general blessing, in honor of the an intercession of St. Blaise, patron of, of throats and healing. And we pray, if we ask you to bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Through the intercession of St. Blaise, Bishop and Martyr, may God protect you from every disease of the throat and every other illness. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a great day, everyone.